Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show notes should be filled with all the links, so go and click on them if you need to catch up. Also, definitely subscribe to the channel and all the other ones if you can. It's going to really help the show. But for now, enjoy the rest of the story. Well, so on that note, then, and, and to connect to the point that you made earlier, um, as, as much as I think we should be teaching the kids about the brain and do it in a fun way where they're actually a, attracted to it. And, and I've done it and, and they sit there in silence and they go, well, wait, is it billion neural love pathways? It. Everybody loves learning about the brain. It's fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> but I, I think we should be teaching leaders this, though. Teach mm -hmm. leaders, bosses, whoever it may be, the teachers, the departments of education, the department of health, whatever it may be, government, politicians, if they understand the brain at a deep level, no. they'll be able to be more aware of, I think we'll prevent crime. I think we'll mm -hmm. prevent illnesses. I think we'll prevent diseases, mm -hmm. uh, not prevent them fully. I, I think the law is going to be around. I'm not saying that, but I think we'll be able to live much healthier lives, have much healthier societies, mental health issues will start to reduce mm -hmm. uh, and reverse as we've, you know, touched on before, but I've spoken about the brain to these kids and they go, wow, I yeah. didn't know you could. And I talked to them about neurogenesis. I talked to them about neuroplasticity and synapses connections. And I talk about the, um, 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 myelination. Mm. And, um, and, and if you think about it, when they know that's happening in their brain, they look at that learning, mm. whether it's difficult or easy in a completely different way. Yeah. And, um, and it's like mindset changes and it's not rather than saying, I can't, I just can't yet. Mm. There's yeah. a simple step to rewiring that pathway. <laughs> yeah. 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 I hope it makes sense. Cause you're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes absolute sense. And, uh, that I can't yet is a technique I use all the time with my clients as well. If I hear any negative talk, we try and reframe it. Mm. And uh, that's one of the tips I give them. If you, if you yeah. find yourself just sort of mentally thinking oh I can't do that or I'm no good at that yet <laughs> just adding yeah. it to the end absolutely yeah. so with you then hmm. um We've covered it. We've covered the topics of where you know you physically it was going wrong, and you're looking at that now in your present day. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked. We've touched on your mother with Alzheimer's. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any connection to that then? Because I remember a fascinating couple of stories that you shared on our pre-chat last month mm -hmm. regarding the journey in Alzheimer's with yourself. Do you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah, you might need to prompt me a little bit. I'm not sure what you're referring to. <laughs> So you talked, it might not be Alzheimer's, but you talked to me about driving and you spoke to me about playing games oh, with your friends. Yeah, oh, I would see what you mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, God, I hope it wasn't Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, not, but, I've not told you had Alzheimer's, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so um, I put it down to menopause at the time. Yeah. I put it down to brain sort of fog symptoms. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I got lost in the car twice. Um, the brain fog do, wouldn't do that to you, would it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think I had brain fog, but it would be things like I'd just forgotten what we were talking about or what for coming to the kitchen for. Yeah. I mean, it's never happened to me in, in terms of driving. I could be wrong, um, but yeah. I, I, think, I think it could be similar because, yeah, yeah okay. if you come into a room and you can't remember what for, mm. it's it's a similar thing. You weren't paying attention. Your brain was thinking about lots of other things. Yeah. Perhaps it's the same when we're driving. You know, you're kind of on autopilot. Yeah. You think you know where you're going, you yeah. perhaps take a wrong turn, and then you're just like, oh, I don't know where I am. <laughs> That's what happened to me anyway. I, I got lost twice, and it, it did scare me, because this was in the height of mum having uh, the diagnosis of Alzheimer's and us just trying to do some work uh, around the Bredesen Protocol. Um, so that really affected me. And then something else happened. I was out with friends, um, and we were just... We were playing Connect Four. I don't know if everybody knows Connect Four, but it's just a game where you, where you, yeah, you put coins in a, yeah, coins in a thing, and you have to make a, a line of four. Well, I played Connect Four and loads of other games with this particular friend many, many times, and she is not at all competitive. She, I mean, she genuinely doesn't care. She's not at all competitive, and she just plays for the joy of it. Um, and she always used to say, "I don't even know how to play Connect Four. Really, I don't know how to strategize. I don't know how how to get." 
um, four in the line. And I used to win, I'd say, 90% of the time. And this one she day... She just got I, really good. <laughs> well, this one day I was out with her and another friend and we were playing Connect Four and I was just losing again and again and again. And I got quite a panic on because I realised that I had no idea how to strategize. I didn't even know that what I'd been doing was strategizing. I... I was genuinely looking at it and thinking, I don't know where to put the counter in this go to build towards getting a mm. four, to stop them getting to a four before me. Um, and I lost again and again and again. And they didn't think very much of it. They just laughed and joked about it. But it really worried me. Um, and thankfully, <laughs> I found the Brotherson Protocol and... Um, the rest is history. I, I actually did a cognitive test. I'll, I'll give you a link at the end that you can pop in the notes for your, um, for your please. viewers. Yeah, um, I did a cognitive test online, which is absolutely free. It's really quite granular. It's really helpful. Um, and it, it shows you an overall score, but it also breaks the scores down into memory, executive function and processing speed. So memory, it's pretty obvious what that is. Can you remember stuff? Um, processing speed how quickly can you respond an executive function is um following complex instructions and being able to strategically think and things like that um, and i scored high in the 90s for memory and processing speed and 55 for executive function huh. now that's not actually bad the way this this test works it scores you out of 100 against people your age and gender so if you score 50 you're average so i probably could have looked at that and thought well i'm above average even in executive function um i wasn't awfully happy about being compared to a bunch of menopausal ladies who've probably got brain fog <laughs> so i thought average is, is not desirable at my age um and really it was the disparity being in the 90s for the other two and 55 for executive function um, really worried me. I'm, I'm in the I'm in the uh, high nineties now for all three measures and overall as well. So wow. um, I know I know the protocol works, and I've got lots of clients now. Lots of clients who score way worse than that on their first attempt on um, the, this particular test. It's called the CQ test. Um, it's totally free, by the way. So I, I'd encourage everyone to give it a go. Just have a look, see how how you're doing against people your age and gender. Um, but I would implore you, don't take average as a good thing. We want to be higher than average. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, my, my clients time and time again improve their scores um, and end up, you know, scoring really high. It's interesting that you bring up the average because I've heard the doctors say things like that to me. Oh, you're about average. But the average is different to the average 20 mm. years ago. Mm. or 30 oh. years ago it could be a yeah. lot lower and that yeah that kills me we don't we, but we we hear that as a reassurance so we walk away feeling oh my average is the average person oh, but the no. average is a lot lower so that yeah. doesn't mean it's any good the human phy physiology hasn't changed like I the said, average has <laughs> i i didn't know any kids with asthma when i was a kid the average of health was clearly better then and but i yeah. take that a step further as well when doctors do tests blood tests or whatever they tell you if you're in the normal range and i'm not sure if your viewers actually know what normal means to a doctor um it's a statistical term it means you are within two standard deviations away from the mean so if you if you are familiar with the idea of a bell curve and mm. most people fall in that center point yeah. What they're actually saying is two standard deviations away from the mean covers 95% of the population. Right. Now look around you at the population. Do you want the same blood test results? Do you want this, whatever test it is, do you want the same results as 95% of the population? Obviously, we don't want to be in the two and a half, mm. but I don't want to be normal either. I want to be optimal. Absolutely. You know, I want to look at how unhealthy the diets that people are eating thinking that they're healthy because that's what it says on the packet um and yeah. I, I don't i don't want to be lumped in with them i want to be optimal that's right i think the baseline of where we used to feel is because uh, i turn around and say you know i'm the happiest i've ever been um and i know there's a few factors that make up happiness uh, and i talk about that as you know understanding your purpose your why um your satisfaction and your um i forgot 
I've gone blank. Um, <laughs> purpose, <laughs> meaning, satisfaction, and uh, oh, I've gotten the last one. I always talk about this as well. I'll come back to that. But, you know, I, I always say I'm the happiest I've ever been, right? Mm. Uh, in terms of being, you know, crystal clear and so on versus how I used to be. And I keep mm. going, I'm above, I'm above. But maybe that just used to be the average baseline. How we used to be so clear. We mm. used to be mm. so healthy. Maybe that's how we, you know what I mean? Does does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. The baseline you know is just different now. <laughs> when I first started working, I knew loads of phone numbers. I didn't ah. write things down that I needed to do. I knew yeah. what I needed to do. I didn't have to write them down. Now we all rely on sat navs. We rely on our phone having all the information in it, having all numbers, the phone yeah. numbers in it. You know, we're not challenging our brains. Mm. So, yeah, normal is not going to be as good now, is it? Average <laughs> is not going to be as good now. No, it's not. Absolutely. Um, so what is, in your career then, what are some of the really big st um, standout points from a client? Like what, what really stands out? Have you got a particular client that really sticks out that you could share with us? A, 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 a oh, so many, story? so many. Oh, because, really? um, yeah, because it's always a joy to meet somebody for the first time because initially they've probably thought there's nothing they can do and now suddenly they're having a conversation and they've found some hope so that's that's just a lovely thing anyway yeah. but i will share the story of one client um who, who just popped into my mind um she came to me she had been working so hard on her brain health for years she found the bredesen protocol before i did wow and she um, she knew what her causes were. She knew she'd been exposed to mould, and she knew that was an issue. Um, she'd also been exposed to mercury. She'd had some testing. She knew these were issues. Um, she she was getting worse and worse and worse, despite working really hard. She'd found a practitioner. It was not actually a Bredesen practitioner, but she'd found somebody to help her, and um, she didn't really feel very supported by them. She'd been with them for two years. Uh, which was very expensive. Um, and they, they told her not to bother with the keto diet because her diet was pretty good already. Um, and when I met her, she, she came to me and she said she just wanted some support. She wanted someone else to do the research, someone else to tell her what to do, someone else to give her some guidance because she was exhausted with trying to research what she needed to do. Um, and she was really, really stressed. Um, and in fact, when I first met her, I seriously doubted whether I was going to be able to coach her. Mm -hmm. um, it was quite early in my new business. Um, and I'm not proud now. I probably accepted some clients back in those days who I might not accept these days. You know, I might I might kind of say, I'm not sure this is for you. <laughs> um, but at the time, you know, you start in a new business, you perhaps accept some clients that you think. And either, it's it's not that you that you're trying to trick them it's just that you're so desperate to help people that you want to mm. help everybody who comes along of course um and the reason i didn't know whether i was going to be able to coach her was she was really scattered in her thinking we had we had a zoom call and for a large part of it i couldn't follow where she was going um mm. and i, I thought mm, this is going to be really hard i don't know how to coach somebody <laughs> when she's so all over the place and i can't i can't follow she would she would tell me something. She'd she'd refer to something that she'd think she'd told me, and she hadn't told me it. And I was like constantly playing catch up and trying to work out what was she referring to. And um, and in six months, we got her memory scores from thirty two to ninety two. Wow! And she worked so hard. I'm not I'm not claiming credit for this. She worked really really hard. She just needed a little bit of guidance. We got her on the keto diet. She was very stressed in her environment. She would she'd. She was basically exhausted. She, you know, I, I, I would have said it could even have been chronic fatigue syndrome. She was absolutely exhausted. She didn't know where to start. The house had got quite cluttered. Her husband was doing a sterling job trying to do a lot for her. He was working full time, but he was trying to do a lot around the house and to really support her. But it was getting all a bit cluttered. And she'd had a few instances of trying to go and declutter. And all she'd ended up with was like lots of bags of things <laughs> to go somewhere and she didn't know where they were to go and just bags around the house now so and then she was too exhausted to continue so I helped her a lot with stress and we actually um and obviously we did the keto diet I mentioned um but we also 
I did a bit of interior design with her, which is not what I ever expected to do. Wow. It wasn't interior design. But we just picked one small room that was not too much of a challenge. And we decided to just clear that and to design what is the purpose of that room. And she chose that she wanted somewhere relaxing, somewhere to go and journal, somewhere to go and think and decompress. And we just talked about what are the simplest things we can do to make that room feel that way. And actually, we just ended up getting um, a vase in a particular colour that she find, finds relaxing and a throw. And that's all we did. Just cleared that one room, put a vase of lovely flowers in, put a throw. What? Um, and that gave her just like a little retreat somewhere to go and relax. And it gave her the energy to tackle some other rooms. Yeah. And, you know, six months flat, she's turned it round. She's written a book. There's no way she could have written that book when I first met her. What I mean, means you it, then? But, you know, she, she she was struggling with it and she finished it. What made you go to that strategy of going clearing up the room then? I was entirely led by her. I, I, yeah. I just listened to my clients, you know. Yes. Yeah, she, she <sighs> was very, I mean, I mentioned before about my um, 12 areas that we look at. Environment is one of them. And so she'd scored that pretty low. And yeah. um, I just asked her, you know, what is it about your environment? And she told me. And um, it was just really listening to her and how she, how, what she tried to do and how she felt about it and and just the, the fatigue even thinking about it. Um, and I just suggested could, could, what, was, what would be the tiniest thing we could do? What would be a good place to start? And she chose this room because it was the smallest room and it had the least clutter already um and there was a side benefit she wanted her grandkids to uh, be able to sleep there as well and um, when they visit and yeah. so she chose the room and we just found the tiniest steps that we could do but but she 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 completely led it you know Amazing. we were looking at uh, i was just asking questions like so imagine in this room being a really calm place what what colors do you see yeah and makes then, sense what are the smallest things that you could do just to bring us just a tiny splash of that colour into the room? It was it. It was entirely led by her. I just listened, and basically the questions I ask usually my clients have them on a plate for me. Just just by just by a hundred percent listening. Mm. The the question you need to ask next that just comes to you. I don't I don't pre plan the session. I don't pre plan. This is what we're going to cover today. It's entirely led by the client, um, and what is important to them will come out. I agree. Yeah. And I, I, I live by that philosophy a little bit with these interviews, you know, and sometimes I have all these notes and I watch other podcasters and they talk about how prepared you've got to be. And I, and that's why I, I probably need to relax on my pre-interviews because they tend to be longer than my actual interviews. <laughs> and um, uh, it's you know, lovely I, to get to know you beforehand. <laughs> no, I agree. With, and that's why I do that for the connection side of things. So our vibe is a little bit more natural and I, I don't regret that with any of them. Um, but I don't, I, I probably get all this information and I don't read over it too much. Some people go, might think, well, that's lazy. But I genuinely believe I can scan it and mm. get the feel and go off mm. what you're saying in the moment. Yeah. Um, but why don't, with with your line of work though, why don't we, why do more people not come? Why don't you, th I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself now. Why do people not come to people like yourself? Why, why do we not tackle root causes in society more often rather than why do you think i feel like we're going through this reactive stage in our life well we've been doing it for a long time haven't we reactive deal with the problem but we're buying problems down the line yeah. why don't we look at the root causes so come to your people like yourself in your industry um whether it's to i don't know through nutri nutri um, nutritionist whatever um why don't we look at all of that first opposed to giving medicine out left right and center treating health yeah. incidences with tablets what yeah. why don't we yeah what do you think in, it is you know i think in the uk we're just so proud of our nhs <laughs> i mean we are it's very good though it is it is and we're so super proud of our nhs um and i think we've kind of grown up with if there's something wrong you go to your doctor and they give you a pill <laughs> and we don't question it um and actually you know that that has become ingrained. I can't remember when the NHS started. Was it like in the mid-40s? 
before that, you didn't go to the doctor because you didn't have money to go and pay a doctor. So you used home remedies and you looked after yourself. Um, I mean, thank God for the NHS. <laughs> I'm not saying yeah. it's a bad thing. Of course. But I do think technology has moved on so much and pharmaceuticals have moved on so much that I feel like we have lost our own agency. We, we, we've we lost the feeling of control over doing something for ourselves. We go to the doctor and we hand over to them mm. um, all control. And if they suggest a pill, we take it. I mean, I've, I've not really been like that. My mum was a nurse, by the way, and she's definitely not one for taking pills. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, I'm guilty of that. I, you know, I got diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis, uh, you know, an autoimmune issue, a very inflammatory, mm. you know, my lower back. And I would yeah. struggle. I struggled for about nine years to sleep. Yeah. And eventually a doctor found it that was on the borderline of ankylosing spondylitis. So I didn't qualify for the cortisone treatment. I had cortisol. Well, how, mm. What do you say? How, what's it called? Cortisol, yeah. Cortisol treatment. Cortisone, sorry. Cortisone, yeah. yeah. Hydrocortisone, sorry. That's right. Yeah, they wouldn't I've, be... We wouldn't be pumping a stress hormone into you. <laughs> no, no. I know. Really? And I say cortisol all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't qualify for that, but I was in the pain nevertheless. So it was, mm. I say borderline because the back specialist said it was borderline. You might fall into that category and then we can treat you. But no one ever spoke to me about let's reverse it. Let's mm. go back. Let's, so I took strong anti-inflammatories now. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.